We are asked to evaluate the integral and you are probably doing so within the context of learning or reviewing the various techniques of integration. And one tip is if you're uncertain as to how to proceed, you can always try a U substitution and see if that gets you anywhere. And if you're going to do a U substitution, it usually works for you to let U equal the function that is underneath a square root or is inside of a set of parentheses. So we're going to give it a shot here by letting U equal one plus the natural log of x, and then that whole quantity is squared. And then what we need to do with u substitution is to take the derivative. So du equals the derivative of one, which is a constant, is just zero, of course. For the next term, we need to use a chain rule. So we're going to move the power down. We'll have two times the natural log of x, and then that'll be raised to the first power now because you have to subtract one from the exponent. And then you have to multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which is the natural log of x. So we multiply by the derivative of the natural log of x, which is one over x. And so that will give us the derivative. Don't forget the dx here, as I almost did. We typically like to solve for dx when using this method. So what we'll do is multiply both sides by x. And by doing that, the x in the numerator and the x in the denominator here will cancel out. And then continuing on to solve for dx, we perhaps can divide both sides of the equation by 2 ln of x. So that will cancel out on the right-hand side. That will leave you with dx. We can just clean this up a little bit. So there's your dx. And then what we're going to do is go back and attempt to make some substitutions here. So we'll end up with the integral of 15 natural log of x, all divided by x, and then you're going to have the square root, and we had let u equal one plus the natural log of x squared, so that's just gonna be a u. And then this dx at the end is going to be x times du over 2 times the natural log of x. This is going to work very nicely, in fact, because we look around and we see that the x's here will cancel out because you have one in the numerator, one in the denominator, and equally conveniently, the natural log of x is going to cancel out as well for the same reason. And then you'll be left with a constant of 15 over 2. Let's factor that constant out, so we'll have 15 over 2 times the integral, and then what's left, and be careful here, it's not the square root of u, it's one over the square root of u. Make sure you keep that square root of u in the denominator for the time being here. And this is a relatively easy integral because we can rewrite the square root of u as u to the power of one half. Furthermore, we can move the u to the one half to the numerator, this gives us u to the negative one half, and then it's a basic power rule of integration. So we're going to add 1 to the exponent, will become u to the positive half, and then we'll divide that by the new exponent. In this case, rather than dividing by the exponent, we're going to multiply by its reciprocal. And that's a good idea when you have a fraction involved. So multiplying by the reciprocal, we'll actually put a 2 right here. And then don't forget that you are still multiplying by the constant that we had factored out, the 15 halves. That's neat because those twos will cancel. So now you simply have 15u to the 1 half plus c. And then we go back and we remember what u equaled. It was this entire 1 plus the natural log of x squared. So you'll have 15 times 1 plus the natural log of x squared. All of that raised to the power of half plus c. That's perfectly fine. For those who prefer radical notation, you can also write that as 15 times the square root of 1 plus the quantity natural log of x squared, and then plus c. So either one would be correct.